Hello, everybody. I'm Alexis Brink, and I'm a TAP. And it's a privilege to interview today uh, Van Joins, PhD. He's the author of the newly released book, Inside Out, The Six Personality Types That Hold the Key to Success in Your Life and Relationships. Van is the developer of Personality Focused Treatment, PFT, and he's the president of Southeast Institutes for Group and Family Therapy. And welcome. Thank you, Alexis. Good to be here. Congratulations on your book. Thank and you very much. Yes, I would like to read a little review first from Ellen Bader, and she says, Few books give readers so much ability to understand themselves and those they love. This book is a relationship treasure. Ellen Bader, PhD, and co-founder and co-director of the Couples Institute. So that's really wonderful. And so then I have a few questions about the book so people, you know, can get to see what it's about. And the first one is, what are personality adaptations? And does everyone have them? Personality adaptations are the ways that we adjust our behavior in childhood in order to survive psychologically and meet the expectations of our parents and other significant authority figures growing up. And yes, everybody has uh, adaptations. They are universal um, and um, are extremely helpful to know about in terms of uh, understanding why we behave as we do. Yeah. So you said, um, so we, we all developed them in childhood. So yes. can, you, can you give some, a few examples of, of how that works and how they come into being? Yes, uh, there are three adaptations that are called surviving adaptations because they're developed in the first 18 months of life uh, in response to the whole psychosocial issue that Eric Erickson talked about in terms of trust versus mistrust. And when we feel like trust breaks down and we can't rely totally on our caretakers to take care of us, then we adapt our behavior in a way to try to take care of ourselves in light of that. Uh, for example, in a, in a family in which um, we may uh, feel neglected and parents are preoccupied with other things and um, not as available, oftentimes children will learn to withdraw and go into fantasy as a way to attempt to take care of themselves as a substitute for interacting with other people in reality. Mm -hmm. um, and we call that adaptation the creative daydreamer. Uh, each of these adaptations will have both a positive side and a negative side. Um, the positive side is all the creativity that the person develops in terms of that rich internal fantasy life. Uh, the negative side is sometimes they just stay in fantasy and don't put their thoughts into action in terms of getting their needs met in reality in relation to other people. And wonderful. And how um, you've developed a system that people can use uh, as self-help. How did you recognize um, yeah, the need in your practice for this with clients? How, did, how does it manifest and how can we recognize that? Well, I, I first learned this uh, from Paul Ware, who was a psychiatrist in Shreveport, Louisiana, who um, was trained as both a psychoanalyst and a transactional analyst. And he was, at the time, um, director of an inpatient treatment center for adolescents. And he was really curious about how kids uh, develop and adapt in their families of origin. And he began to rec recognize that there are just so many possibilities. Um, and he identified six core adaptations that all of us have some combination of. So, so in a sense, we're also born with them, I would think. Well, we have, we're born with certain traits that predispose us toward certain adaptations like introversion, extroversion, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, Jung's uh, categories, basically. And then depending on how the people around us interact with us very early, we um, uh, develop these different adaptations to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I took your workshop a while ago, and I think it was the subject exactly that the book is about as well. And uh 
There are um, psychological diagnoses, right? And you make this relationship between them that we've often heard of. And those are more negative. So you put like a positive spin on it, uh, really. Well, right? I think, How do you... I think um, these have been identified by mental health professionals uh, for a very long time. But uh, essentially, when mental health professionals looked at it, they were looking at dysfunction or pathology and uh, didn't uh, see as clearly that these are really uh, behavioral um, styles that really you see all the way across the spectrum from completely healthy to completely dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And so they all have both positive and negative aspects. And the, and the key is really to use the positive sides and to let go of the negative. When people uh, use the negative in a kind of chronic maladaptive way, that's when you see personality disorders. So could you give um, an example of a personality disorder and then um, really what we can do with it in a creative way, like the way you name them? Can you give an example? Maybe choose your favorite one. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll give an example, not necessarily my favorite, but um, uh, people who have, for example, a paranoid personality disorder uh, are really hyper vigilant, vi vigilant and constantly on guard, afraid that somebody or something in the environment is going to do them in in some way. And um, that's the far extreme, the negative side. The positive side is that people who develop that adaptation, um, which I call the brilliant skeptic, uh, because uh, they learn to attend to much more stimuli than most of us have to attend to to take care of ourselves. They really develop their in intelligence um, and are often very uh, sharp, detailed thinkers. They uh, are very careful and precise in how they go about doing things. They make great researchers. Uh, they make um, they they really know how to take charge of situations and. They're usually the people who manage organizations. Um, they're very good at, at dealing with details. And um, so uh, that's the positive side. Um, so the, they, they really know how to um, organize well and, and keep things in order. Uh, the negative side is they can move into being hypervigilant and very controlling and, uh, in their behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th this is really a self-help book, right, Van? Yes, it's, it's, it's a self-help book that was that I wrote for the general public. Um, I originally wrote a um, book for therapists uh, on the personality adaptations, and um, I found the information so helpful personally in working with clients and also in teaching and training other therapists that I wanted to make it more available to the general public. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so you are also a transactional analyst. Right. And so do you uh, use TA in this theory? And if yes, how? Yes, it's really based on transactional analysis theory. Um, an example is that each of the adaptations have either one or more um, what, are called drivers uh, in TA terminology. They are messages, conditional messages about how to be okay, like um, be perfect or be strong or hurry up, uh, please others, uh, try hard. And each of the adaptations will have one or, or combination of, of those drivers that they use. Um, and knowing, the, knowing what someone's drivers are, uh, is a good is a helpful way to help diagnose uh, their adaptations. One mm -hmm. of the ways that we go about it, diagnosing. So when you start reading this book, uh, will you just become aware of oh this this is like me, and then you can work on it in that way. I mean, I had it a little bit in your workshop. Um, you you kind of choose the one uh, that you identify with, and then you can work with that. Yes, I think as. Um, these the adaptations are described in detail that people begin to recognize um, what their preferred adaptations are. And um, 
all of us will have one of the one or more of the surviving adaptations. The the other three adaptations are called performing adaptations because they uh, have to do with um, how to go about trying to meet the expectations of our parents and significant other authority figures we grow up with. Mm -hmm. So we develop them between which age to which age, really? Um, well, the surviving the stages. adaptations basically are developed in the first 18 months. The surviving adaptations are developed um, between 18 months and about six years of life. And they uh, are developed in response to specific developmental stages. Uh, for example, what happens between 18 months and three is kids are going through separation individuation. And the, you know, they're often saying no to parents and attempting to establish their own autonomy. And parents are often afraid that they're losing control of the child. So they often move into an over-controlling uh, types of behavior. And the child's uh, way of responding to that is to uh, get into power struggles with the parent trying to fight for their own autonomy, their own ability to do things their way. And uh, that's called the playful resistor adaptation. And then uh, the, the issue shifts from about three to five um, from doing things to doing things perfectly well and uh, being good boys and good girls and which is that ad adaptation is referred to as the responsible workaholic. And then around five and six, uh, the emphasis shifts from doing to more being. And um, uh, what kids often focus on at that stage is trying to uh, please uh, the parents and uh, entertain them and um, get, the, get the parents to like who they are just for being rather than having to do things. Mm -hmm. So we can recognize many of these adaptations in right. ourselves. Right. Yeah, it's wonderful. And I really like that it has such a positive uh, take on it. Yeah. Uh, may I read a quote from um, Harville Hendricks? Sure. Inside Out peels back the layers of mystery about the source of suffering and offers a path to joy. After skillfully, bril brilliantly, and clearly connecting the past with the present as the cause of suffering and achieving insight into how the past creates the present, the author offers specific processes and tactics that will help create a joyful future. We recommend Joint's book as a resource to therapists and to the public as a guide to recovering our original humanity, the joy of being. So that's Harville Hendricks, PhD, and Helen La Kelly Hunt. So that's really wonderful. And yeah, I have that sense. I mean, this is really today so wonderful that we can do all the self-help. Right. <laughs> we can do a lot of self-help and work on ourselves and really better our relationships and relationships with others and to ourselves. And that's really what this book uh, offers. Right. Yeah, each of these adaptations has a specific way of making contact with other people through either thinking, feeling, or behavior. And then a, what's called a target area for growth and change in, in which they, by working in that area, um, the person is most likely to open up and to let go of defenses and work effectively with you. And then there's a, what's called a trap area where people have the greatest defenses that uh, are important, that's an, is important to stay out of and uh, in order not to get stuck. And by knowing those doors, you really uh, have some very precise ways of forming good relationships that are going to be most effective in uh, relating to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds really wonderful. I can't wait to receive my copy. Good. <laughs> and also, yeah, this will make a beautiful Christmas gift to yourself and to or to a loved one, because it's really, um, I think it's written really for anybody, right? You don't have to be a professional right. counselor. However, it will help counselors and therapists as well to understand these um, adaptations. Yes, that's really my goal in writing it. 
Venice, Ellen Bader says, this book and this information is also very uh, helpful for couple work. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, I have developed a questionnaire that's available at our website that uh, individuals and couples can take. And if you look at the profile side by side, you can tell almost everything that's going on in a relationship, both on the positive side and negative side. And um, so it's a really helpful guide in um, work, doing couples work uh, to help couples understand why they're having the difficulty they're having and also how to go about changing that and teaching them how to use the therapeutic doors uh, to know how best to make contact with their partner, how to uh, approach them in the area that works best and avoid getting into uh, the, the partner's defenses. So it um, is really a nice um, tool in my experience in, in doing couples work and for mm -hmm. couples to use themselves. Great, so yeah, so the book is really um, very uh, helpful for couples, couples therapy, individual, getting to know yourself. So really for anybody. Right. Yeah, so, um, well, thank you so much, Ben. You're welcome. Thank you.